just want to read a bit of the gospel again so that you can really hear the bits that I want us to think about. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them. And they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd. And he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. In the name of the one who loves the beloved and love itself. Amen. <clears throat> Do you have somebody who calls you away to a quiet place by yourself in the wilderness? Do you have somebody like that? Somebody who calls you away by yourself to a quiet place in the wilderness. Let me ask it a different way. Have you ever looked at somebody that you know and love and thought they need to be called away to a quiet place by themselves <laughs> in the wilderness? And have you been that person? I have such a person. It's actually a furry-faced person. Um, well, not person, my dog. Um, I preach about my dog. Um, and River is the one that makes me go away to a quiet place by myself and pray. I go to quiet places in the wilderness in the middle of the city. Um, I love going up to the American River, uh, walk up there just by Sutter's Landing. I love walking around the capital. Um, it's beautiful. You can be in the city and kind of out in the wilderness really quickly. And I fall into a kind of a cadence of walk that meets my breathing and then I can become calm and quiet. And if I'm quite honest, I wouldn't go as often if River wasn't making me every morning. So I sometimes think of her. We have a canon pastor in Anne Arthur, although at the moment she's being canon grandma. Um, I sometimes think that River is like my canine pastor, um, not the canon pastor. This is a bad pun. No? Too bad? <laughs> It's an awful pun. Um, but uh, River does make me go and do that. She, she's like the dean's chaplain. She makes me go and pray. Um, I actually have somebody without a furry face that does that as well. Um, I have a spiritual director, which is the more grown-up version. Um, I speak to somebody on a monthly basis who knows all of my habits and patterns. She knows all the ways in which I don't want to pray. She knows all of my lack of discipline. <laughs> She knows all of my anxieties about sitting on my own in prayer, and we talk through it and explore it. Do you have somebody who calls you away to a quiet place by yourself in the wilderness to pray? Jesus was that for his disciples. He was their spiritual guide, their spiritual director, their pastor. They just got back from ministering to so many people and so much had gone so well. It was so full of busyness. They had been healing the sick and casting out demons and preaching the good news. And they got back and they were bubbling away with all of this energy and excitement. And Jesus says, that's wonderful. Now quiet down and take a deep breath and come away to a quiet place by yourselves. What do you do in the quiet place when you get there? Where is your quiet place? Do you have one? Do you have a place to go to? Do you know what you do when you get there? We have the formal prayers of the church. We have morning prayer and evening prayer. Those can be really useful. We also have meditation or the kind of prayer that you do when you're walking in nature. I love that. Mindfulness. You can fall into a rhythm with your footsteps and with your breath, like I said, and become mindful of where you are in amongst trees, in the grass, by a river. Thich Nhat Hanh even says that we can become mindful whilst washing the dishes, though I've never found that to work for me particularly. But walking in nature is my place to go. Where's your place? And what do you do when you get there? 
I find after the busyness of my mind settles a little bit, things that I've done the day before I have to do the day in the day to come come up in my mind, but I try and think about them in a different way, not like a task to be accomplished, but by something to be noticed and offered to God. God, this is what happened yesterday. I don't know what to do with this. Over to you. Or God, I have to do this later on today. I'm not quite sure what that's about. Over to you. Sometimes feelings come up. Right now, anxiety, fear, grief, loss, frustration, anger, particularly at the last year. We've just come through a difficult year. These feelings can come up, and in this prayerful place, I'm not trying to solve them or resolve them or fix them. I'm just saying, God, here they are. Here's how I feel. I don't know what to do with it. Can I share it with you? Um, When Jesus asked them to go away to a quiet place by themselves, he was being like their spiritual guide. When they got there, he asked them to pray. It's like they were on a kind of retreat. That's what he was inviting them to. I've discovered that having a retreat can be an important part of my own spiritual life. Uh, years ago, I used to go to Elmore Abbey in Spain, in England. It was a Benedictine Abbey, and it was beautiful, an old country house where they'd converted it into an abbey and built a chapel on the back. It taught me an important lesson about prayer. In Benedictine spirituality, there is this idea that prayer is work and work is prayer. When you're working, you're praying. When you're praying, you're working. So they had made their chapel a barn. They'd built a barn, and they'd made that the place of prayer. Because on a farm, you work in the barn. And in an abbey, you work in the chapel. And that was an important lesson for me. The the Latin phrase is ora labora. Ora, to pray. Labora, to work. To work is to pray. To pray is to work. It reminded me that I should book my praying in like I book my work in. (laughs) I am contractually obliged to be at work every day. (laughs) But I don't always treat prayer like that. (laughs) Sometimes when I don't feel about it, I I don't feel like I don't do it. (laughs) Sometimes I just think of prayer in those desperate moments when I need to send an arrow prayer to God and say, dear God, please help. But I think we're being invited to something more habitual. I'm so grateful for my dog because she makes me do it more regularly. But also, if I didn't have her, I'd want to book it in, whether I felt like it or not, on a daily basis. So Jesus was the spiritual guide that invited them. He invited them to a place in the wilderness in order to pray. And I think he invited them habitually. That's interesting, because as I look at this text... I also see that Jesus broke all of those rules. Did you notice? He says after they came back from a busy time of ministry that we should go into a quiet place by ourselves to pray, and then he gets to the quiet place by himself to pray, and there's a crowd there already. And rather than saying, hang on, I'm on vacation and I'm on retreat with my disciples, he looks at them and says, oh, I feel compassion for them. They're like sheep without a shepherd. I'm going to talk to them. So, There's a little bit of Jesus saying, do as I say, not as I do at this point in the text, although that's very, very Mark. That's very the gospel of Mark. In the gospel of Mark, it's always like, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then on the way to this, that happened, and Jesus was so busy he couldn't even eat, and his parents thought that he was crazy. Um, All of that. And yet, to be fair to Jesus, I don't think there's a double standard here. I really think that he prayed so habitually that he knew when he could skip it and attend to the needs of the people in front of him. And if you look really carefully through the whole reading of the gospel, you will begin to notice just how many times he goes off to a quiet place in the wilderness by himself to pray. I never used to notice that at first, but the more I started looking for it, the more I realized it was a very habitual thing for Jesus. 
And why am I saying all this today? Well, it was in the gospel, so I'm saying it for that reason. But I'm also saying it because we've come through a really tough year, a tough year and a half. And now might be a really good time to think about our habits and patterns of prayer. You know, it's strange. When we were told to shut down 15, 16 months ago, that's kind of a simple decision. Like, just stop doing everything. And what we also do is we kind of put a cap on our feelings because that feels anxiety-inducing. And we say to ourselves, I'm just going to get through this. And we got through it for a couple of weeks, and then we extended it to a month, and then we extended it to a couple of months, and then it became longer. And we were still kind of just gritting our teeth and getting through. And I don't know about you, but I'm finding in some of my conversations with people right now that feelings that we've been burying for a year are coming out because we're beginning to open up. We're gradually getting past COVID. And yet, we feel like we're getting past it and it's still here. It's not quite gone. There's a Delta variant that we don't know how that's going to impact us. There's some uncertainty. We're still wearing masks. We haven't quite put everything back together like normal. But we're beginning to feel some of those feelings that we pushed off to the side or pushed down. Somebody said to me literally before the service started at nine o'clock this morning, I'm feeling grumpy and crotchety today. I said, oh, why? And she said, I think the last year is just catching up with me. And that was the truest statement that I've heard from many people. Um, It's in the air. So now, it might be a good time to listen to the voices of someone who's saying to you, Come away to a quiet place and pray for a moment. Do you have somebody saying that to you? If you don't, I'm saying it to you right now. Could you be that person for somebody else? Someone who you know to be struggling, grieving, stressed, anxious because of this last year? Could you be their spiritual guide and invite them to come to a quiet place and pray for a while? And while you do, think about the place that you're going to, what you'll do there, how you'll feel your feelings and offer them to God. And then think about your prayer practices and whether you're going to commit to them. Put them in your calendar like they are an appointment and do them. I think if we do this, we will give to ourselves and to each other the resource of space to grow prayerfully and to cope with this next moment that we are going through together. Amen.